Part two of the 1585. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna cover three things. Why on earth the 1585? Why am I selling the 1445? And why on earth am I crazy and I don't have a zero turn when I have so much grass to mow? And I'm gonna answer those questions in reverse order. Zero turn, why do I not have a zero turn? I don't like them, period. Uh, that's like 80% of the reason that I don't have a zero turn is I have never been comfortable in a zero turn. My hands fall asleep uh, when I am controlling the sticks and stuff and I've just never been comfortable and they cover me in grass and my allergies are bad enough that I do not need to be covered in grass. And then probably 20% of that reason is utility. Uh, I really want a more utility, utility type machine. I want something that I can use 12 months out of the year, whereas a zero turn, I'm going to use six months out of the year and park all winter. Um, and if I have, a, if I needed a zero turn, it would definitely be something like a 997. Uh, because if you can't tell, I'm kind of allergic to a lot of newer gas stuff, uh, considering all of my major daily use equipment is uh, diesel. So, you know, when it comes to zero turns, I'm going to have to require a diesel zero turn. It is just something that I prefer. So that answers why I don't have a zero turn. The next question that, or the, in reverse order that I asked was why am I selling the 1445? And there are two reasons I'm selling a 1445 or that 1445. One is heat and two is dust. So as I already mentioned with the zero turn, uh, my allergies have gotten worse and worse in the last couple of years. And it has been extremely dry here in eastern South Dakota the last few years. And as it's gotten drier and it's also become windier, uh, we had like the one of the windiest springs on record this year. All that wind basically creates some terrible allergies for me when I'm mowing if I'm not paying attention to where the deck discharge is going. And uh, it basically just, it makes it a pain to mow the yard and I really like mowing. And so dust filtration is a huge one, which we'll get into that with the 1585 here in just a minute. And then the second one is heat. My wife would much prefer to use a front mount unit versus using the, the snowblower on the, the 4066 back there. So she would much prefer this unit. Well, if we're both, if after a big snowstorm and we're both outside moving snow, uh, I'm sitting in a nice, comfortable heated cab with my, with a light jacket on, if a jacket on at all. And she's sitting in this thing looking like the Michelin man because it's got some plastic sides and a little heater. Now, keep in mind that it's not terrible and a, a soft side cab is still 10 times better than sitting out getting covered in snow, but it's still not very warm, particularly when it gets down to zero degrees. So there's nothing wrong with this 1445, nothing at all. It is just one of those things that it was time for us to upgrade. This unit's got 2,500 hours on it. I see no reason that it can't go to four or 5,000 hours on it without a problem. So that brings me to my next question I asked. Why on earth did I buy a 1585? So Deer has five different terrain cut models. This is what I was trying to say in the last video, and I couldn't remember the 1550, and several uh, folks have already pointed that out. So you have the 1550, you've got a 1570, a 1575, a 1580, and a 1585. If I'm looking for heat and dust filtration, I would be shopping for a 1575 or a 1585. If you go back and look at numerous videos that I've done in the last couple years, I allude to the fact that I am looking for one of these or was looking for one of these. Uh, however, the key component there was looking because I actually went shopping a couple times. I bid on a couple units. I, I have asked several questions about some of these and just the deals typically just fell through. Uh, they were either too far away for the price. They... Uh, were too much money for my budget. They uh, one time I got really excited, and then I found out the machine had been under partially underwater. Um, there was another one that uh, I actually got as far as sending the serial number to Deer, and come to find out it had a huge amount of warranty work done to it uh, related to the engine. And so it was one of those deals that I just never really got to the point where I found one that I wanted that I felt comfortable buying. This one, on the other hand, all the stars and moon and about 10 other things aligned uh, to make this deal happen. Uh, and I, I'll kind of get into some of those specifics because I do want to get into 
kind of towards the tail end of the video of why a front mount, um, going back to kind of wrapping back around on, on why I, I like a front mount. Um, so basically had I seen, had this unit come up for sale about two weeks beforehand, I would have dismissed it as too much money. Had it been come a couple hour, couple of weeks later, uh, it would have been one of those things that I would have have moved on, and I would not have had the the capital required to make this purchase. Which gets me to my first kind of of deal of why a 1585 or why not a 1585 front mount units like this are extremely expensive. Uh, this was a huge lift. I will be bluntly honest that um, there was a lot of discussion around our house before I bought this. However, it was the right move for us at the right time. I have watched the price on these things increase about $10,000 in the last three years. Uh, and with no sign of the current economic headwinds changing, it was time to make a move or just sit on the 1445 for another three to five years. Uh, nothing wrong with either one of those options. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with 1445 that wouldn't, that would preclude it from, from lasting another three to five years and being very, very serviceable. But it was one of those things that everything aligned for me to pick up this unit. It was not one of those purchases that I was actively looking for a, a front mount. Uh, I was casually looking for one and at the time I had the money and I own it. Um, it just all worked out perfectly. Uh, in the end, my goal is to kind of give you some, some numbers here because obviously things are going to change and they're changing very rapidly. My goal is to have to be about 25 or $30,000 into this 1585 by the time I sell everything else. Uh, so the 1445, two snow, two 60 inch snow blowers and one, uh, 72 inch side discharge deck and a couple other things that I need to get rid of. So that kind of gives you a, a, a roundabout estimate of, of how much this upgrade is going to cost. Um, I think to get into the weeds of, of how much I paid and stuff like that, that probably wouldn't benefit anybody uh, in terms of, of, you know, cost, because everybody can look up the MSRP of these machines. Um, right now in October of 2022, MSRP of just the power units, 47000 some odd dollars, I believe. The deck, the the 72-inch side discharge deck, because they don't make the V-Flex deck anymore, the side discharge deck is going to be 4500 to 5000 I believe. The 60-inch blower back there, uh, you're probably looking at... 5,500 now, uh, by the time you buy all the attaching parts and everything else. Well, if you add all those up roughly, <coughs> you're looking at 53,000 bucks just for, was it 53? No, you're looking at $58,000 just for the power unit, the deck and the blower. So, um, it is one of those deals that I ended up with the V flex deck, a 60 inch, um, side discharge deck and this broom. Did I say the blower and the, and the blower? So I ended up with four attachments in the power unit. And I'll be into those, basically I'll be into those, well, three attachments because I'm going to keep the 60-inch blower, the V-Flex deck, um, the 1585, and the broom here. I think I'm going to keep the broom here. I'll be into it for twenty-five dollars to $30,000 by the time I get done selling everything off. Uh, why this particular 1585? because it was basically brand new. Uh, it's got 90 hours on it. It's got a warranty until 2024. Um, aside from the fact that the V-Flex deck is a little bit older, there's just, there's no problems with it. Uh, I mean, it's a nice, nice unit. Um, there's just nothing wrong with it. I mean, obviously there shouldn't be anything wrong with it. And it was one of those things that it was the right time, right place, right everything for me to get this upgrade done. Um, so I really can't complain um, about it. Some people probably think it's absolutely ridiculous that I have uh, what amounts to a $50,000 lawnmower. But it what is what works in my situation. Um, this is the machine that it's, it's going to be the primary caretaker of this property for the next 10 to 15 years. It's going to mow. It's going to do a lot of the up-close snow blowing next to the house. 
It's going to broom the yard in the spring. You know, there's just, there's tons and tons of tasks for it to do. And my guess in 10 to 15 years, it's going to have somewhere around 1,500, maybe 1,700 hours on it. I'll probably put approximately 100 hours a year on it is my guess. And so it's one of those deals that it was the right deal for us. Um, when it came up and I mean, I'm very happy with the purchase. I will be even happier when the 1445 sells so I can start recouping some of this, uh, expenditure. Um, and I've had several people ask the 1445 with, um, it will be this 72 inch side discharge deck and that blower up there. Um, I'm asking $16,000 for the whole setup. I don't know if it'll sell. Um, I'm not too much in a rush to sell it given the time of year. Um, I'm guessing it's kind of more of a mower than it is a blower. Um, so maybe it might won't even sell. It might not even sell till spring. Not too concerned about it at the moment, but I would like to recoup some of my investment or I won't even say it's investment cause it's not an investment. Um, some of my expenditure here in the next, you know, six, eight months. Um, and the, the shorter time I have to store the 1445, the better, but, um, That is kind of the answer to those three questions of why not a zero turn? Why am I getting rid of the 1445 and why a 1585? By extension, why a front mount mower? Um, Just really nice unit. Really like it. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing more videos on it. Uh, I will probably do the next video, part three. Uh, In fact, I'll probably film part three um, at the end of this video and it'll come out in a couple days. I'll go over the controls and the attachments and everything and some of the options this machine has on it compared to, uh, other units, things, things, if you're, if you're in the market for a 15 to, for a front mount unit, things you'll want to consider, um, uh, stuff like that. So if you have questions, comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching.